I guess digital things were being talked about by people at Bell Labs in the 70s, mm -hmm. maybe even in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Picture coding and so on. I mean, you know, reducing something to numbers, which can then be preserved forever, is sort of a it's an obvious idea once you get into this sort of a computer's bent of mind. There are two things that happen in, in digital audio. One is you, you have to sample the signal because you can't put an infinite string, you, you can't take you know, a million numbers per second, that's too much, right? So you have to decide on how many you need per second. That's the sampling question. And you have to decide on how accurate those numbers should be, the quantization question. In a digital audio system, you do have a certain quantum level, it, it be it, albeit small, if you have a 16-bit system. But still, if the signals get small enough, the system either gets deaf or if it's mounted right at an edge, it'll start to clatter back and forth and produce more output than it should. I remember having the first ideas on this. Uh, and I said, well, you know, if you just add some noise, what will happen to the, to the input is you'll just take the quantization staircase and you'll be moving it backwards and forwards, essentially, and just be smoothing it out. And, and so we, uh, we started working on that idea. Our initial ideas were interesting, maybe not quite right, but they really showed some interesting things. So we, uh, we actually built uh, some little uh, quantizers and some simulation circuits and started working at this thing called dither, right? It, it has been, I think, something that has really helped the audio community. It's, it's certainly true that, that um, people didn't understand both sampling and quantization. And they still, a lot of people still don't. It surprises me how very few students in electrical engineering have actually their, whether their profs have actually let them hear the effects of sampling and quantization and aliasing and images and, and, and dither and distortion, mm. things like that. It's su surprising how few. And we, we feel that ongoing education will be necessary. And in a way it's still necessary because the community is still worried about what sampling rates we should use. Quantization is a different story. We know that the, the more bits we use, the, the lower the noise will be and the lower the distortion will be. Uh, the thing that I think gave digital a bad name in the early years was the glitch at the MSB, right near Audio Zero, where, you know, where in a two's complement converter all the bits change state pretty much. I think we had quite a bit of equipment which had small nicks in the transfer characteristic there, making crossover distortion. So that was, that was imputed to digital audio, even though it's an implementational fault. And so we have, we have this tremendous um, backlash, I think, against digital audio. In the same way that we had a backlash against the first transistor amplifiers when they showed crossover distortion, you know, the class B amplifier? Oh, yeah. and, and, and we had to uh, learn how to bias them effectively and, and, and so on. Dither could take a digital audio system and make it linear to way below the least significant bit. And that was, the, that was in the title of one of our papers. Basically, with Dither, a digital system loses all its digital character. It really becomes an analog system. And it, and it has much lower noise than an analog system. And of course, it's, it's um, perfectly restorable and, and it has uh, much less distortion, at least in principle. I wouldn't say that all original <laughs> digital equipment did. I personally believe that, uh, that the CD standard, and I guess there was, Philips initially wanted to go for 14 bits, I think. And then Sony convinced them, I think, to go to 16 or something like that. And then 16 seems a nice number. It's two bytes. So it, it seemed, for the, from the computer's point of view, it was a good idea, too. I personally believe that that standard that we had, the first standard, 44.1 at, at 16, is something that the consumer, it, it's, that gives to almost transparency to the consumer. I know that uh, some of my colleagues today would, would want wider bit widths and somewhat higher sampling rates. And, and since they're available on some of the disks, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't oppose that. But, but I don't believe in going to extremely high sampling rates. I don't believe in going to bit widths that are too wide. 24 bits would be wonderful for the recording studio because you'd have some headroom, some mm -hmm. tail room. You could do the processing without too much regard for, for errors. You still have to be careful of filters and things. And maybe going to a slightly higher sampling rate helps because then the filters just become easier to design. Mm -hmm.